no, I'm sorry, 37. Genesis chapter 37. And uh, Brother Young talked about Joseph on Wednesday, and uh, he gave me an idea. And I uh, looked through it and thought about it and studied it, and, and uh, I think it'll be a help. I hope it'll be a help. It'll be a help if God's in it. And if God's not, then we'll get out early. <laughs> uh, being, up, being up here in front of you is one of the scariest places to be. Um, it becomes more so because you realize how important it is to get an opportunity to be up here and what it, what it means. It, uh, it, it's, it's a big responsibility to take something from the Word of God and then give it, give it to an audience of people who are coming, depending on something from God tonight. And I know a lot of, I know a lot of you, you, you um, you're not going to make it throughout your week very successfully, very well, if you don't get something on Sunday nights. And so hopefully this will be a help to you. And uh, Genesis chapter 37, let's all stand together. We'll read just a few verses. Chapter 37 and verse number 5. It says, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And then if you go down to verse number 9, it says, And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And then you go down to verse number 19, and it says, And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about dreams tonight. And, and uh, hopefully it will be a help to, to some of you. I know it's been a help to me. Father, I thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you so much for your word. A book that's living, a book that's powerful, a book that will help us through any difficulty, any situation. It'll, it'll restore our, our soul. It'll restore... Uh, our hurt feelings, it'll heal our hearts, it will reconcile our relationships, a book that we cannot live without. Thank you so much for it. I pray that you'd use me this evening. I pray that your Holy Spirit would come into this place and that you know, you'd work on people's hearts and show them what needs to be done and, and that you'd allow your word to be a big influence in people tonight. Amen. A congressman who was getting into his senior years, went to the doctor and complained about being unable to sleep. The doctor said, oh, don't you sleep at night? The congressman said, yes, I sleep very well at night. And I sleep quite soundly most of the mornings too, but I find it very difficult to sleep in the afternoons as well. And uh, that was a joke. <laughs> uh, another young man went to a fortune teller Gazing into her crystal ball, the old lady asked, What is your dream, young man? What do you want to do with your life? He says, I want to become a great writer. She said, How do you define great? I want to write things that the whole world will read, things that people will react to in a truly emotional level, things that will make them scream, cry, well, howl in pain, desperation, and anger. The fortune teller reassured him, It will be so. He now works for Microsoft writing error messages. <laughs> Uh, well, one day a blonde kept having the same weird dream every day, so she went to her doctor. The doctor said, what did you dream about? And the blonde said, I was being chased by a vampire. And uh, the doctor kind of laughs. He says, so what is the scenery like? The blonde says, I was running in a hallway. Then what happened? Well, that's the weird thing. In every single dream, the same thing happened. I always came to this door, but I can't get it open. I keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, but it won't budge. The doctor says, does the door have any letters on it? Yes, it did. And what did those letters spell? It said, pull. <laughs> Some of you blondes aren't getting it, are you? Uh, anyway, Genesis, Genesis chapter 37. Behold, this dreamer cometh. It's amazing how many of us, especially you men, we love to dream. We love to dream. We don't like to work very much, but we love to dream. And uh, we know we, we think about all the things that we'd like to do. We think about all the things that would be neat to do. We think about all the wonderful opportunities that we would love to have. And then... We don't do anything about it. Uh, ladies, you're the other way. You don't dream. You just see something that needs done, you do it. You don't think about it, you just do it. And, uh, but anyway, Joseph, Joseph had a dream. 
I was thinking how many men in the Bible had a dream. You have Abraham and his journey, seeking a land that God would show him after he started. Uh, you have Noah in his ark. You have David in his anointing. You have Solomon in his request for wisdom. You have Gideon in his 300. You have Ehud in his dagger. You have Jehu in his furious driving, crushing Jezebel. You have Paul in his mission field, Peter in Jerusalem, John on the Isle of Patmos. You have Mary in Gabriel's message. You have Elizabeth in the birth of John. You have Manoah in the birth of Samson. Many, many, many other people in the Bible all had a dream given them by God. This was not their own dream, but a vision that God had put into their life, a plan, a purpose, something that they were going to do for God. Our founding fathers had a dream. The pioneers had a dream. I was thinking about that the other day. Who in their right mind would pack up everything that they had, put it on a wagon with a couple cows, and travel thousands of miles to a place that they had never been? To build a house, to hopefully get a good crop and not starve to death. That's what these people did. But they had a dream of something great that they wanted to do. They had a dream of freedom. The pilgrims had a dream coming over on the Mayflower. You, you, read, you read about them, you hear stories about them. It's, anyway, it's amazing. It's to talk about uh, a bunch of families that there was not one family that didn't lose somebody from their family that first year. And they knew that it was going to be that way before they left. And they just accepted it, but they had a dream of doing something great with their lives. And all throughout history, there have been great dreams, but there have never been, there's never been anyone who can teach us about these dreams with their life any more than Joseph. He had a dream. You know, his, his brothers didn't like it very much, but there was a purpose that God had given him, and nothing was going to get him to give up on it. And I started to wonder, I started, started to wonder, why do we give up on the purpose God has for us? And it's so easy to do. Uh, especially you talk to young people, get out of college or they're in college and, and they've, got this, they've got this passion and this dream to do something great for God. Or uh, you get saved and you start getting into church, you start reading your Bible and you start learning more and you think, oh, this is exciting, this is great. And you realize there's, there's a wonderful plan that God has for you. There's a wonderful purpose that God, that God has for your life. And you get a dream. You get a dream for a good family. You get a dream for good children. You get a dream for doing something great in your church or doing something great for God. And then little by little, we, we begin to lose our dream. We begin to let it slide away. And it's so sad when that happens, but it happens in every single one of our lives. We have something that we, we plan to do, that we dream of doing, that we have, we have as a, a purpose that we know God wants us to do in our lives, something that can, that can just change the world as we see it. And then, little by little, we lose it. And you read, read, through the, read through the life of Joseph, and it begins. It begins at the very beginning. It begins as a young man who had a dream. And that dream wasn't just his. That dream was given him by God. God came to him, and God was showing Joseph, there is something great that you have to do with your life, and I'm going to use you in a great way. And he was so excited about it, he told his brothers, hey, this is awesome. Look at what's going to happen. And his brothers, no, it did, just did not fly. And then he has another dream. And he tells his parents, maybe he'll get some support from his parents. No support there either. But it was still a dream that God had given him. And he held on to it. He didn't let it go. And I thought, maybe, maybe there are some things in here that will help us to hold on when our dreams start to slip. When a mother is beginning to wonder if the dream she had for her children is actually going to come to pass. When a father begins to wonder if his son, the dream that he had for all the, all, the, all the plans and all the hopes and all the dreams that he had hoped his son would do something great for God and it looks like it's starting to slip away, what can a, what can a father do? When a young man begins, to, begins his adult life and, and he has all these plans and these dreams and these things that he wants to do with his life and it's something great that he knows God has called him to do and it begins to slip away. But look at Joseph. Look at Joseph in the story. Let's look at verse uh, chapter 37 again and look down at verse number... Eight. 37a, and his brothers said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. There are going to be some people in your life that are going to take your dreams, and they're going to mock you for it. They're going to hate you for it. They're going to question you. They're going to try and get you to doubt. You're going to have family members that come to you and say, What are you thinking? Do you really want to do this with your family? Do you really want to forfeit all these things that we get to do just so you can 
do these things that you think are going to lead you up to your dreams? Are you going to actually do these things going to put you in a difficult position sometimes? Even good people doubt their dreams. Even good people in your life are going to doubt your dreams. As we see when he tells his father his next dream, and his father said, what are you talking about? You're saying that your mother and I are going to actually bow down to you? You're a pretty cocky kid here. You just need to be quiet. And you need to keep your dreams to yourself. But even through all the doubt, even through all the mocking, even through all the hating, Joseph realized God had a purpose. Number one, Joseph didn't let others discourage him from his dream. He didn't. You know, one of, the, one of the biggest reasons we start getting away from our dreams and letting the dream and the purpose that God has for our life slip away is because we let other people get us discouraged. Amen. We do. It happens in my life. It happens in every single one of our lives in this room, unless you're Jesus. And, uh, but it happens. You even go to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, sweating drops of blood and out of grief for people and actually asking God to take, if it be possible, can you take this cup from me? And you get, you get Jesus even asking God to, not, to, not, to make it so he can not go through with the purpose that he was here to do. But he didn't let others discourage him from his dream. I think about mothers getting discouraged, letting people around you discourage you in how you raise your children. Think about fathers letting people discourage you at your work. Letting friends and their words get discourage you from your purpose. Discourage you from being the father that you had a dream of being. Discourage you from the mother they had a dream of being. Discover you from, d- discourage you from being the grandfather or grandmother that you had a dream of being. And you get this huge goal in your mind, this purpose. Yeah, I'm going to be a godly man. I'm going to be a godly father. I'm going to be a godly mother. I'm going to be a godly Christian. And I'm going to be there for people when they need, need me so that I can do something great for God. And then others discourage you. It might be family, it might be your friends, it might be your children. It might be just the people around you that don't mean anything by it, but just the wrong word is said at the wrong time, and it gets you down about what you had a plan to do, and you're discouraged in your dream. Joseph didn't let others discourage him from his dream. He held on. He might have kept quiet about it, but he held on. He might have uh, changed how he presented himself, but he held on. Number one, he didn't let others discourage him from his dream. Number two, he didn't let difficult circumstances keep him from his dream. I remember, I remember in high school, uh, I, I, I hated, I hated getting up in front of people. I, I just hated it with a passion. I was scared to death about it. I was scared to death about dating too, and that, that worked itself out. That wasn't actually a problem that I thought it was going to be. Uh, but the getting up in front of people, that was, that was, I was scared to death. Scared to death. And it got to the point where I knew I should go to Bible college at least for a year, I know that's what I should do, and I was going to do it, but I, was, I, started, I started thinking about um, coming back, going to, going to college, getting a degree in whatever, um, some, some kind of thing that would make a lot of money. And uh, that sounded good to me. I thought, I can do that. I can sit in an office and work on a computer and do this and that. And started thinking those thoughts as a senior in high school. And um, I remember the, the conferences and the camps and the preaching that I heard that year, it had been going on for a while, but that year it really... It really dug in. And uh, it, it, it began uh, to give me a, a dream. And I, I, I remember sitting, imagining, you know, you hear, this, you hear this great preacher preaching and you're picturing yourself thinking, oh man, I wish I could do that. And that, that's good, that's the beginning of a dream. And uh, you start seeing those things happen. You start hearing the preachers preach and the pastors getting up and, and uh, you hear them ripping faces off and you just love it as a teenager. And uh, you think, oh, I wish I could do that someday. And you start getting that dream inside of you. I remember, I remember getting that dream inside of me and not wanting, not wanting to do anything else except for that, but I was still scared to death to do it. I remember a little earlier than that, uh, hearing about uh, great men and their, their prayer life that they had, hearing about the close relationship with God and, and how, how, how wonderful it was to be able to get alone with God and actually feel the presence of God when they're alone praying and in conversation with Him and in their Bible and in their walk with God. And I remember getting that and I remember going home and, uh, you know, ninth, tenth, grade and uh, just deciding I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And uh, I remember getting on my knees in my room and praying. And uh, just in the middle of the day, on my knees, in the middle of my room, door closed, just praying. And uh, you pray for everything you can think of. Say everything in the whole world that comes to mind and you pray a whole two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, many of you have been there. 
And I remember little by little uh, figuring out what to do and how to do and listening to people talk about how to pray and prayer and reading some books on it. And, and you get a little bit better at it. And you get a little bit better at it. And you get a little bit better. And pretty soon you realize, uh, I remember finally getting to college my freshman year, they would only let us work 10 hours a week on work scholarship because they were sure we'd use the other 30, 40, 50 hours a week wisely. And uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> but I remember in the afternoons, I'd go to my room because everybody would be gone, and I'd pray. And I remember getting to the point where I, I'd pray and be in tears and, and be in my room and realize that uh, 45 minutes had gone by, that an hour had gone by, and realizing this is, this is what they're talking about. This is, this, is, this is that dream that was instilled in me and that I got from some great men of God who shared their dream with a young man. And it's, it's, it's a dream that comes that you can't let go. That he can't let go. He didn't let others discourage him from his dream. Number two, he didn't let difficult circumstances keep him from his dream. When the slave train came and he watched his own brothers count out the money they received from the slave traders, he still had a dream. God was in control and nothing else could keep God from his purpose. And he trusted in God. When Potiphar bought him and gave the slave, tra slave traders the money purchasing him like an animal, he still had a dream. When he was lied about and accused he still had a dream. When he was thrown into prison, he still had a dream. The difference between Joseph and a lot of us is Joseph trusted in God and was so close to God through it all that he never, ever let his dream fade. He said, okay, God, this isn't good. I hate this. This is, this is terrible. This is, this, is, this is ridiculous, all this stuff. God, I, don't, I don't know, God. What, what did I do to deserve all this stuff? But, man, God, you gave me those dreams. And I'm going to hold on to those things with everything that I have. Genesis 39.9, Potiphar says of him, there's none greater in this house than I. Uh, sorry, Joseph says to Potiphar's wife, there's none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Oh, Joseph had his love for God. Joseph had his walk for God right here. He didn't let difficult circumstances keep, from, keep him from his dream. He knew there was something that God had for him. He knew there was some great future that God had for him. And he wasn't going to let anything get him to change what he was doing and what he believed and what he trusted in to keep him from his dream. He trusted in God. He didn't let others discourage him from his dream. Even when his brothers threw him in the pit, he didn't let it discourage him. He kept going. He might have been discouraged, but he didn't let it discourage him from his dream. He kept going. He didn't let difficult circumstances keep him from his dream. He kept going through all the difficult situations, and now he's in prison. He still knows that there's something that God has for him to do. And be careful. Be careful. Be careful listening to people when they say things that are discouraging to you. Be careful who you hang around because people do it without even realizing it and you're going to figure out there are certain people I just can't be around longer. I'm going I'm I'm to live my life in depression. And I'm going to get discouraged. Be careful. I even even watching, watching the news, it can be a dangerous thing. Don't let things discourage you from your dream. Be careful what influences you. Don't let difficult circumstances, don't let others, don't let any of them keep them from your dream. And number three, he may not be able to achieve his dream. He finally realizes. Maybe someday, but right now, I don't know, because in Genesis 40, verse 1, or I'm sorry, Genesis, end of Genesis 39, he is thrown into prison. Three years later, in prison, Genesis 40, verse 1, it says, And it came to pass, after these things, that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king in Egypt, the king of Egypt, and Pharaoh was wroth against the two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers, and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in ward. Verse number five. And I read this, and I got excited about this. It says, and they dreamed, they dreamed, both of them. Each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. You know what, Joseph didn't just, let others dis didn't just not let others discourage him from his dream. He didn't let difficult circumstances keep him from his dream. And when he came to the point in his life where it felt like nothing was going, he was stuck. There was nothing to do. There was no way out. 
there was nothing else he could do to work towards his dream, he decided he could help others with theirs. I read this. I started getting excited about this. No, I thought, you know what? How many of us, and yet there's some people, some of you, you forfeited your dream. There was something that God had for you a long time ago and you messed up. You ruined it. And God has another dream for you right now. But those things that you look back on think, oh, I wish I could have been there. I wish I could have been doing this. Forget it. Forget it. It's gone. Find somebody else so you can help with their dream. There are some things right now, maybe you're on God's second, third, fourth dream for your life, will for your life. Then you've got these things that he's got planned for you. And you think, oh, I've got these great things. And then it's like you hit a brick wall and it just isn't happening anymore. Find somebody else and help them with their dream. This butler and this baker came in and they dreamed this dream. They have no idea what's going on. They have no idea what's going to happen to them. They've got no idea at all what they're going to do, what these crazy dreams mean. In verse 6, And Joseph came into them in the morning and they looked, up and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers what, that were with him in the ward of the Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said, in the, I mean, they're in prison. Number one, that's a good reason to look sad. Uh, but obviously they looked worse than usual days. And they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream. Joseph said, hey, I can relate to that. And there is no interp interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretations belong to God? I know him pretty well. Tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph. And later on, the, uh, the baker told his dream to Joseph. When it seems like nothing is working out in your life, and your life is at a standstill, find someone else to help and help them reach their dream. God has a dream for each person and you can help them realize it. Living your life serving others is something that you'll never regret. That's why we push so hard for you to get involved. That's why we push so hard to get involved in others. That's why we need to teach a Sunday school class, help in a class, smile and love the children there that come to learn the Word of God from you. We need to teach them to love the Word of God. We need to teach them to dream of having a great home someday with a good marriage and good children. We need to teach them to control their tongue and use it for good. We need to teach them by sponsoring them for the car wash. By sponsoring them for the car wash. You need to pay someone's way through the Christian school. You need to visit on a bus route. Go out soul winning. There are some young men in this room, some boys and girls, especially boys, that need a man to come into a class each week with a lesson prepared, teach them how to shake a hand, to look somebody in the eye, and to teach them the word of God and that God has a plan for their life and that they can have a dream someday. You say, my life just hasn't turned out how I thought it would that helped turn out somebody else's life. You know, but we get discouraged in our dream. We think, oh, the dream that I had and the goals that I had, they're just, it's just not happening. And we get discouraged. We stop teaching. We stop investing. We stop doing the things that really are the most important things we can do in our life. You can get to the point where you can help somebody else. And those of you, you're pursuing the dream that God has given you right now, and he's got a great purpose for your life, and you're right smack dab in the middle. Don't forget about the others. Joseph wasn't out of the will of God for him. Joseph still had that dream. Things were just at a standstill, it seemed like. And he said, hey, 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 I can help you guys with this. And when he helped the butler and the baker with it, then in chapter 41, verse 1, chapter 41, verse 1, it says, and it came to pass, which is a good came to pass, at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. You know, Joseph's not saying that. You guys, you know, you're in here, you probably plotted to kill the king. Who cares about you guys? He, he, didn't, he didn't do that. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't differentiate one person from the other. He saw a need and he saw something that he could do and he stepped out and gave up himself to meet this need. And then the guy goes out and forgets him. <laughs> and then Pharaoh dreamed a dream. And the butler remembers, hey, there's this guy in prison with us. And he helped us out with our dream. Maybe he'd be able to help you out. Joseph just stepped up a little bit. Joseph just got a little closer to his own dream started realizing, I wonder if one of the reasons we never accomplish our dreams is because we don't take the time to help others with theirs. Yeah. Joseph wasn't just helping two guys in prisons now. Now the king needed him, and in helping the king with his dream, he finally found himself fulfilling the dreams that God had given to him. 
See, Joseph had a lot of, had a lot of block walls in his way. He got, to, he got to Egypt as a 17-year-old, 18-year-old, right in between there somewhere. Gets to Egypt, works for about 9, 10 years in Potiphar's house. Not too bad of a life, but he's still a slave. Gets thrown into prison. It's been three years. It's been 13 years since, behold, the streamer cometh. 13 long years, and much of it not very good. He finally reaches the point where he is standing there and through an interpreter talking to his brothers as they bow down before him. And it finally all comes out and his brothers and his father and the whole family comes to Egypt and his father bows down before Joseph and his dreams came to pass. Through it all, Joseph didn't let others discourage him from his dream. He didn't let the circumstances keep him from his dream because he knew God had a purpose and a plan for him. And Joseph trusted him. He didn't put God on his timeline. He said, God, I will do whatever you need me to do. Whatever circumstance you put me in, I'll go through it. And it may be difficult. It may be hard. It may be a ridiculous circumstance. But I'm going to keep my dream alive. I'm going to keep the purpose that I believe you have for me alive. And when it seemed like life was going nowhere, he found someone else who had a dream and put his time and effort into their dream. And then he found someone else who had a dream and put his time and effort into their dream. And then the king had need of him. And once Joseph started to focus on helping others with their dreams, his dream came true. It doesn't all come down to others. Hey, the Bible's very basic. You take all the sermons, all the, all the lessons you can learn from the Word of God, and it all comes down to basic few things, and others is one of the biggest ones. And when we stop focusing on ourselves, we start living our lives, looking around, and seeing what we can do for others. God might just have our dreams come, for, come true. Some of you young men in here, you, you have a dream, you're going you're to preach someday. And you're scared to death, and you don't think it'll ever happen, but it's something you'd like to do. It's something that would be great to do, and you're going to get to the point where you're scared to death, and you're going to get called up in front of the bus to lead a song, and you're going to sing, Jesus loves me five times. It's a start. It's a dream. Don't lose your dream. It took Joseph 13 years to get hold of his dream. That's good. Now, I heard Brother Patterson up at, up at winter camp, and he talked about he made it all the way through Bible college without actually preaching a real sermon. All the way through, four years, two preaching classes, without preaching one real sermon in a, like a church service environment. You know, we preached on the bus, preached at a rest home now and then, but without ever getting up and preaching in one service like this, because he said he was scared to death. Graduated from college, went out, and at his wife, I believe it was his wife's church, her home church, they asked him to preach. And uh, it turned into a very short, he has the time. He has the time down to minutes and seconds of how long it was. And it was short. But here in Preach Now, uh, his dream is here. God is using him in a great way. And it's so funny, you find all the great men. You go through the great men of God who have done something awesome with their lives. I'm not talking about pastors. Pastors are included. I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about laymen in churches. I'm talking about music directors in churches. I'm talking about unpaid church members who have made an impact on history. And you will find out that most of them struggled to begin. They struggled. Just because you struggle doesn't mean that the dream isn't coming. It's just you just got to wait for God. Got 13 years that Joseph had to wait. It's up to us in those 13 years to not let others discourage us from our dream, to not let circumstances keep us from it, and to, in the meantime, help others reach their dreams. Man, some of you, some of you young people, you, you, there's, a, there's, a, there's a young person, you hear him make a comment, I want to do this someday, you think, you're, you're an idiot, you could never do that. Oh, be careful. You're discouraging someone from their dream. Uh, you adults, you may have, there may be somebody newer that comes into church and they're all excited. Yeah, we're going to do this and this and this. And you think they're just talking. They sound like an idiot. Don't tell them that. Let them dream. Let them dream. Let them get a dream that God has put in their hearts. Some of you dads and moms, you've got a dream for your family. Keep, keep pushing for it. It may be difficult, 
There may be trying circumstances and trying times. You keep close to God like Joseph did. You keep trusting in him like Joseph did. And eventually, God's timing will come. And you will get to the place where you're fulfilling the dream God has for your life. I was just so excited. I thought, you know what? If everybody walked with God and found somebody else to invest in, the whole world would be different. The whole entire world. Our church would be different. It, it, it's, just, it's just a wonderful thing that God has given us. You now, some of your wives, you may, you may need to give up some of your dreams and make your husband's dreams yours. Some of your husbands, there may be some dreams that you have that don't fit into God's plan for your life at all. And you're going to have to get rid of some of those. But there is something that you can do. There is something that you can do. Even, even, if, even if it seems like it's years and years away from coming to fruition, there is something that you can do. You little boys and girls in here, you need to get a dream. You need to find out something great that God can do with you someday and say, God, if you'll let me, I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to get up and I'm going to preach and I'm going to sing and I'm going to make a fool out of myself, but I'm going to do it, God, because it's an exciting thing to do. If we can make sure that we live our lives helping others with their dreams while staying close to God, God will work everything out. We can trust in him. We can, we'll never have to doubt that he will come through. Father, thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for wonderful truth you've given us from the life of Joseph. A very brief message, but I think something that I know is a help to me. And I hope it will be a help to others, Lord. Others is the key. You came here not for yourself, but for others. You sent us into the world, not for us, but for others. And you long for us to not just love you, but to live our lives helping others to love you as well, Lord. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, let's go ahead and stand as the instruments play. If God has spoken to your heart, come forward to an old-fashioned altar. If you've made a decision, you know there's something you need to work on, come on down. If the piano plays. I know there, there's, there's a 